Well, it looks like I'm trying my first live broadcast on Facebook. Don't know how it's going to work. Don't know if it's going to work. But here I am. And you know what uh, inspired this live broadcast? As I was waking up from a nap, I found that I wasn't particularly hungry. I wasn't particularly unhappy. As a matter of fact, I was strangely good. So I went out and talked to Teresa, and I, I mentioned all of these things. And I said, I don't know why I feel like that. I can't even think of anything I might want for dinner, although usually I'm craving all kinds of foods that I haven't had enough of during the pandemic. And so as I was in the workshop discussing with Teresa, I decided I would go inside and start considering all the things I might have for dinner, and I came up with this song, which goes, in terms of it's called For Dinner, and it goes, maybe it's spaghetti, maybe, maybe it's Italian, maybe it's spaghetti, maybe it's some raw meat on the Serengeti, I can have anything I want to be perfectly blunt. You know, that's the kind of thing I think about all the time. Can't stop it, really. They used to lock people like me up. Now they just ignore us or pay us lots of bucks to be in the stream. And so I figured I should be in the stream. After all, I just fed my son's koi in the backyard, and they gave me a message for Teresa. They, uh, they actually wanted her to know something, and they told me to repeat this verbatim, which I did. The koi in the backyard that we're keeping for my son told Teresa this. Because I had just fed them, and that's what was on their mind. They always do that when I feed them. Silly koi. Well, anyway, I think I'll be doing a lot of these little videos. And you know why? Because I just don't have anything better to do. It's true. It's true. I've managed to organize all of my material that I have, have uh, created. Uh, my writings, both fiction and nonfiction, about the Dramatica theory of story. <clears throat> Excuse me. About the um, uh, of some of the poems. I have some amazing poems, and I post them, and nobody notices. But that's probably true of poetry in general. I have a whole slew of books, dozens of books and booklets I've published on Amazon, self-published, of course. And uh, and then I've got uh, the music. The music's always been the most important thing to me. Over the years, I've created something like more than 500 individual songs, melodies, riffs, hooks, little chunks of something on the piano and guitar that I thought was interesting and didn't want to forget for later development. And now here I am at 68 saying, when's this later development coming? And all I've got is this incredible list of all of these. I've spent hours, hundreds of hours, over and over again, going through this material and organizing it by decade. Here's what I wrote in the 1970s. I call it the composer's sketchbook. But you know what happens when I put those up? I put them here, I put them on SoundCloud, put them on my blog. I show them to my family and friends on my other Facebook channel. And you know what happens? Nothing, not a thing. Nobody looks at them, nobody cares. I care. You know, that's, that's a quote directly from Luke Skywalker in uh, the original Star Wars movie. I care. So, at least somebody cares, I care. But the funny thing is, I woke up from this nap today, here we are at the end of the pandemic, and I'm beginning to really get into the notion of going back into the world. Fully vaccinated, Teresa will be fully vaccinated two weeks after in another, just checking the day, nine days from my son's birthday. And a week from Saturday, we're actually going to see my daughter face to face without the glass between us for the first time since the pandemic started. It's very exciting. My daughter, her husband, my two grandsons, and then my son has a, a boy, and and there's another on the way, and I might have had to actually go and stay and take care of my grandson or my through my son, uh, because they're having this other baby this week early, earlier than expected, and they weren't covered for three days. They had everything down, so it was Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. It's Tuesday. Still might happen. But because we're playing it close to the vest, and we're making sure that we're not taking any chances. I mean, we, we did the disinfecting every bit of food that came in with the grocery delivery because we wouldn't go to the store using Lysol wipes, which were hell to get when the shortages were out there. But I managed to keep us in enough of them to wipe down every single product that came in the house. And we put the mail into quarantine for 
three days, didn't matter what it was, even paper, just to make sure. Quarantine for three days, washing our hands all the time. And now it's kind of opening up and we're just about there and everybody's vaccinated, but still some of them waiting for their two weeks. I'm over a month past, very happy about that. Teresa had an extremely hard time going through it, but only lasted for a couple of days on her second Moderna shot. But man, she was wasted. It was almost as bad as COVID in the short term. But COVID, of course, well, my stepfather died of COVID and I wasn't able to see him. He was 82 years old and uh, talked to him on the phone, but he wasn't quite there from COVID dementia that they had. That was last June. So things have really changed. We're coming up on a year's anniversary. Just the other day, I found uh, some free DVDs that he had asked me for. I had bought him a DVD player, a portable one he could have on his little table where they bring his dinner in the nursing home. And I was seeing him every week, once a week, and I would call him on the phone every night, and I would ask him if he wanted something, and I was getting great movies for him that he just wanted to have from so long ago in the 1940s, the 1950s, things he grew up with. And, and so I would get him these DVDs. And, the last three that he asked for, I, I got for him, but I didn't send them because just after his birthday in February, um, we had the lockdown and no one was allowed to go in. And I could have sent them to him. He requested them. I got them off Amazon, but I, I chose not to because I didn't know in those days if the mail could have brought that into him directly. If he could have touched his package and gotten COVID. Well, he ended up dying from it anyway, so, you know, all I did was deprive him of those movies. But you'll look back and, and question, think about all the things you might have done with those you've lost, whether they're pets or people. You know, I've never really seen a good ending for anyone in all my 68 years. It's always at the peak of their angst or very physically painful or uncomfortable or a slow degrading into mental mush of these people that you love that have memories of. Well, over the last year during the pandemic, I've been spending all my time going through all of my old family papers, family photos, family videos, and I'm planning on transferring all of the film that we shot. We shot probably so much film. My grandfather was really into that, and I myself made a career in the motion picture industry in my youth, or as they say in my cousin Vinny, um, Joe Pesci is saying uh, the, is the representing uh, two young people in a case against uh, that the state has against them. And the judge was sitting there, who's Fred Gwynn, by the way, who was Herman Munster. He's playing a judge here. He was also a very good um, children's book author uh, before he died, not so much after. But in any event, uh, Fred Gwynn is there and he's sitting on the bench and uh, he, Joe Pesci, looks over at these uh, two boys he's defending who were in their I guess, and says, now these two youths, and the judge puts up his hand, excuse me, did you say youth? So I am saying now, in my youth, I was a filmmaker, okay? I was, I was good, you know? I was world-class editor. Had all kinds of wonderful opportunities to sit in front of a, a bit, uh, on stage, where we presented films, and we were there for how we've done it. Um, I directed a couple of low-budget features before I was 30, and then after that, nothing! It's another line from a movie. Um, you ever see Sorrow, the Gay Blade with, with uh, George Hamilton and Brenda Carl, Ron Liebman? Hysterical movie. If you want to laugh your socks off, get Sorrow, the Gay Blade, because she talks about Brenda Vaccaro, that her husband is the Apolde, played by Ron Liebman. Liebman. It's a great he says, you know, uh, he has, uh, you know, oysters. Once a year, he has oysters. And then we make mad, passionate love all night. And then for the rest of the year, nothing, she said. Now you see how my mind works. I go, nothing. So when I go, nothing, I'm thinking back to that scene in which he goes, nothing. Now this just made me remember if there's a movie uh, called Polly, I think it is. P-A-U-L-I. And... Um, it has in it um, uh, uh, Cheech Marin, and uh, he says, no, they don't talk. Polly's a talking parrot, and uh, nobody believes he really talks, and he's really got a mind of his own. And uh, Cheech Marin, who deals with parrots, says, no, 
I say taco, they say taco, you know, basically, whatever he says, they parrot it back to him. So uh, while I'm making that same sound here in my conversation, my mind immediately goes to the movie quote. Teresa said to me the other day, she said, um, you know, you're way too wrapped up in the movies. She says, it's not the world. And I said, according to Garp, ah, well, be that as it may. Uh, I don't know even why I started this video. I just never done it before. I didn't know technically how to make it work. Technically, I don't even know if it's working. So, uh, I'm not sure how this will go. Up. And I'm not sure what response it'll have. I'll bet, just like everything else I post on my page, nothing! Uh, in any event, twice, twice in any event, I'm losing the, the stream here, okay? It may be stream, but I'm losing the stream of consciousness, stream of thought. Um, I think I'll drop in from time to time and put a live video up just because I'm tired of doing all this stuff where I have to do it you know, work it and edit it and polish it, whether it's art that I'm drawing or words that I'm writing or, or music that I'm composing to try and get that perfect studio version of it, you know, uh, or, uh, you know, photography that I spend endlessly lining up a shot because I think I am going to have the last one too. Uh, but I like to talk about stuff, so what the hell? I think I'll start talking about stuff and uh, posting it up here. Now, I don't know how much video you can put up here before they pull a plug. Uh, we live next to an airport, so you may be hearing a plane go over. That's a big drawback when you're trying to do some live performance or studio recordings on music. And also for conversation. Sometimes they come shuddering through here on these army cargo planes. Well, some sort of cargo planes come shuddering through here, and it's very difficult to talk. So, uh, Teresa's coming into the room now. I've kind of talked myself out. I'm going to end this video, and then uh, we'll, see, we'll see what happens. You know what I think will happen? Nothing! So, uh, that's it. Uh, I'm going to go see if I can find something to, to eat as I start the program off with a song I don't think that Teresa heard, but I've already done it once, and I'll end it so she can hear it, which is it's called For Dinner, and it says, maybe something Italian, <coughs> maybe spaghetti, maybe some raw meat, on the Serengeti, I can have anything I want to be perfectly blonde. Okay, so uh, anyway, she's over there cringing right now, and I think I've probably ended any opportunity for her enjoying her dinner to come. Uh, she may just cancel the whole thing. As for me, I'm still looking towards the Serengeti. So, uh, like they say, keep watching the skies at the end of the original movie, The Thing. Keep watching the Serengeti, and perhaps someday I will return as predicted by the prophecy.